In this video recording, I'm going to walk through the steps that I normally walk through whenever I set up Air Magnet to do a new passive site survey. And when I say passive site survey, I mean a survey of an existing wireless deployment where I'm listening to any or a specific SSID and I'm just collecting data on the current wireless deployment. I have loaded in my generic floor plan. I have not sized it, and as you can see by default when you load in a floor plan into Air Magnet, the default dimensions are 120 feet by 120 feet. Well, we know that not to be true, so what I need to do is I need to go into Display and click on the Scale the Map Measure Mode icon. I do want to recalibrate the site dimensions after measuring. I have used Google Earth to measure the dimensions of the building from this wall to the beginning of the external elevators and I happen to know that this is 273 feet based upon the Google Earth calibrations. I'm going to leave it to be a dual mode direction recalibration because these floor plans were drawn to scale by the architect so once I measure one side and, and state the scale for the one wall then the rest of the drawing will be to scale as well in the X, Y direction. Um, what I can do is make sure that one of these doorways is three feet because our standard industrial doorway in um, major buildings are typically all three feet. I do not want to recalibrate site dimensions. And let's see, this should be approximately three feet at four feet. Let me let me go walk it out um, since I'm actually in the uh, area where I'm measuring this. And let me use one, two, three, four. So they are actually four feet approximately um, just by using my shoe measurements. So that, that will be close enough for the test that I'm doing right now. Um, you could use a measurement wheel or you could use a laser sight distance uh, measuring tool if you have one of those. But for right now, this will work for what I want to do. I want to compare the air magnet application and how it displays passive survey data, passive RF data, versus the ECAHOW survey tool. I've uh, got a 30-day license demo of the ECAHOW tool, and I want to compare it against the air magnet tool. I'm going to start with what I know first. Um, so I'm going to start the air magnet application. It's set to scan the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz channel. I'm going to do a passive scan of any SSID. Uh, from the drop down here, I'm not going to click it because I'm not at a, uh, a clean environment, meaning I, I don't want to show the SSIDs that are currently uh, detectable um, for reasons I'm sure you can understand why, since this is not my building that I'm in. Um, so I'm just going to scan all of the SSIDs. I will slide this tool over so that we don't see them once I start scanning because the really important thing that we're looking for is the signal to noise ratio right here. Uh, the MAC address of the access points are all going to start out with uh, Cisco MAC addresses so that's that's fine too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my scan. I'm going to walk down the hallway and take a right into the patient room which is empty and I will collect a series of measurements like I do when I'm doing a passive survey. Walk into all the corners of the room. Back out into the hallway. Into this room. The center. And I'm just going to collect two or three rooms worth of data so that we have a reasonable amount of, of data to display when it comes to actually displaying the data and seeing how it looks um, with the Air Magnet Survey application. I click as I turn um, because I have the application set to auto sample as I'm walking and I want to click as I turn and change directions so that the application will be able to make nice, neat, straight paths. Uh, so in case I need to show the customer where all I walked, it doesn't look like a mess. You walk in nice, straight, neat lines, and it looks good when you present it. Uh, you also, if you pause the application, you do not want to pick up recording in a different 
location. Say, for example, if I paused the application here, you want to come back to that same location and click again to resume the data collection here. You wouldn't unpause it by clicking over here in this other patient room and picking up the survey from a different location from them where you paused it. If you ever see a big dotted line on somebody's survey data where that's obviously taken place, say for example, I'm not going to go over into this other patient room, but say for example, and you can see a big dotted line like this, I've been told that this type of resuming a survey in this method messes up the, the data collection that's going on in the background. Uh, so that you want to, let me undo that, you want to resume your survey where you paused it originally in order to have a consistent recording of the signals and RSSI and signal to noise ratio. I'm just going to do a couple more rooms, bear with me. into the corner. I was fortunate enough to find a, a wing of the hospital where the, the rooms are empty and unlocked because typically if rooms are empty because of no patients they typically lock the, the rooms so that the hospital beds don't get moved to someplace else and not returned to the wing. And I also thought it a good place to do a comparison to, of the two different applications, just simply because of there's such a large area that I can cover. Okay, and that's enough for that. I'm going to leave it named Passive Survey 1. That's fine. You can name it something meaningful if it, if it helps when you're merging all of your data together. If your floor plan, say for example, doesn't have the different departments written down on it. It may be helpful to name your survey paths with the department name, so if you need to refer to it later once you've merged the data and you find that there's coverage holes, but you can't remember what that department of the building was, you can refer back to your path name to help jog your memory or to help you fill in the blanks of where there's actually coverage holes. So I'm going to click Save. I'm going to click the Save icon. And then I'm going to go into Display. And let me zoom out. Actually click zoom out all the way, fit the whole thing on the floor. Okay. So here's my survey data. Um, I can interact with it over here on the right hand side by saying show me everything that's covered by at least, just for example to get a couple coverage holes showing up, let me show me everything that's covered by at least say NEG 54. And this will show you the areas of the floor plan that are covered by a signal strength of at least neg 55 dB. And if you mouse over anywhere on the floor plan, it will show you a big list of all of the access points that were detected, uh, what their signal strength was, what the noise floor was, what the signal to noise ratio was. It will also show you a predictive download rate from the access point as well as if there's any kind of interference detected on those channels. Um, so if you want to show what areas would be voice quality, I uh, say NEG 65, NEG 67, depending upon the voice handset um, in question. And you can see we only have one little corner of one of the rooms that has a signal strength of less than NEG 67. And its signal strength, I mean, let me go into configure file, configure, and I will um, ignore APs whose max discovered signal strength is less than neg 80, so we don't have those showing up on the floor. And if I mouse over it now, my list will be shorter, or it should be in any case. Um, So the AP that was seen in the corner of that room there was at NEG 75. If I want to see just the areas covered at 2.4, I would uncheck the 5 gigahertz. If I want to see everything that's covered in the 5 gigahertz, I would select the 5 gigahertz. You can also go into the different SSIDs, but this gives you an idea of how um, the signal strength is displayed when you do a passive survey with air magnet. 
and uh, I can also adjust the the propagation algorithm that's in use because as you can see I obviously did not survey outside the actual building itself um, the place where you do that is in project properties and you can say the signal propagation assessment I typically ratchet it down a little bit to about 30 feet but you do have options to choose different uh, choices for the environment that you're in you can say what the default AP power is. It's not absolutely necessary to do this for a passive survey because you may not know what the actual milliwatt output is of the access points because they could be auto controlled by RRM on a controller based solution. So I will close the project and I do want to save it. And once I reopen the project, you will see that the propagation distance has changed. So our area outside the actual floor plan that shows signal strength being uh, detected or assumed based upon the free space path loss that you've given the application will be much smaller. Okay, I've reopened the application after I changed the propagation distance of the RF signal and you can see that the assumed propagation distance is much smaller now, it's about 10 feet smaller based upon the scale that I've given the floor plan and that I changed the propagation distance. If I click on the per channel, we can see the per channel findings from the passive assessment and we can see what channels are being displayed based upon the color chart off to the left. If I wanted to change the color settings of the channels that are being shown, what you could do is expand the menu off to the left and then right click one of the access points and then you're able to choose from the menu off to the right what color you want to represent that actual channel. And as you select each channel you'll see the box off to the right hand side has a dashed line around it. That's the color that's going to be used to display that channel in your per channel layout. So that's how you can change the channels. If you have a bunch of channels that look to be the same color, you can diversify your colors by picking them manually instead of letting the application pick them for you. So that's, that's the nutshell version of an air magnet passive survey. Uh, now I'm going to switch over to the Ekahau application. I have to load a different wireless driver onto the USB Proxim card that I have in order to use it with Ekahau application. So I'm going to stop recording and then I'm going to resume recording once I've got the application installed and licensed and, and ready to go with the passive survey collection.